Welcome to this video. If you're working with Angular, chances are high you heard about RxJS and observables. Chances are even high if you haven't worked with Angular because it's a pretty hot topic in front-end development right now. But what does it actually mean? What is RxJS and what are observables? How does it really work? In this and the next videos, I'll try to help you on that. Now, I'm on the official webpage, rActiveX.io slash RxJS. And here we have this very nice explanation RxJS is a library for reactive programming using observables to make it easier to compose asynchronous or callback based code. Now, do you fully understand what this means? The first time I read this, that wasn't super clear to me. So let's just use it and let's understand how it really works. For that, we need to install it, so let's click on that. And I won't use npm, because for now I'll stick to a web-based editor, jsbin.com to be precise, but later in later videos I will also show you how to add it to a local setup. For now I'll scroll to the very bottom to pick a CDN, and I'll pick the bottom most to get the latest version, and here all I have to do is remove add version to get it automatically replaced with the latest one, 5.3 in this case, and then I'll head over to jsbin.com, you may use jsfiddle if you prefer that, for example. And here, I will add script in the HTML portion, hit tab to autocomplete this, and then add source and paste in the link I just copied. Next, I want to add a button here to the body, again by typing button and hitting tab, where I'll just say click me. Now I want to handle this, so I'll go to the JavaScript por portion here and also add it or open the console so that we can see whatever I log to it. Shrink this a little bit here. And now I want to get access to the button. So here I'll use document query selector vanilla JavaScript here to select that button. And as a side note, I'll be quite honest, a comparable example can be found on the official page if you click on learn it. Here I'm basically just rebuilding these first examples because they really are good for understanding it. So we got access to the button. And what we can do with vanilla JavaScript is we can add an event listener to react to any click, so react on clicks, and execute some code. And in JSBin I can use ES6 code, so I'll use an arrow function here. And here I will actually get an event object, and I could simply log this. So console log event, like that. If I now hit control enter and click click me, well we see we definitely got some object being logged here. Quite a lot of code, but that is just the event object in the end. So in the end, this is working as I would expect it to work. You see, it's of type mouse event. So that is working. Now that is the vanilla JavaScript way of handling it and there's nothing wrong with it. Now let me rebuild this using RxJS. Since I added this import from the CDN, I can basically comment out this code here and write a new code. And here what I will do is I'll use the rx package available due to this import, there the observable object, and now a helper method from event, which will create a new observable based on an event. So here the way this works is I specify the event source, so the button here, so where I want to listen to that event, and then the type of the event, here click as a string. Now with that, I already got my observable, but nothing would happen right now. To react to an event, I need to subscribe to an observable. So I will execute subscribe, and subscribe actually takes three functions we can pass here. I'm only interested in the first one here, and that first function gets the event data again, and I can then log it to the console as before. If I hit control enter and click this button, you again see the event object we saw before. So the same code as before or the same result, but with different code. And on the first look, this looks more complicated, doesn't it? Using the subscribe thing and then this function we pass as an argument to subscribe. Why would we might want to use that? Because with observables, what we can already kind of see here, we have a funnel-like setup. Our event data, travels from top to bottom, so from the data source, which is our click event on the button, to the code we execute in the subscribe function here. Now here obviously that funnel is very short, small, we only have the subscribe function, 
But the powerful thing about observables and why they are so useful and used that much in Angular are the operators, which allow you to transform the way this data is handled, used, or looks like immensely. Let's say we want to make sure that we only react to click events once a second. So if I spam this click button, we omit or we drop all event pieces, all events which happen more than once a second. Now with vanilla JavaScript, if we go to the official documentation, scroll down to flow, we can see this would be the code achieving this. We would get the current date, we would then store the last date in this last click variable. We have a rate, which is the milliseconds difference. So this uh, window of time we want to have where an event should only occur once. And we would have to check this manually. Now with observables, we can use a built-in operator. It's called throttle time. You can also find it here in the official documentation. It takes a number as an argument, and that actually are the milliseconds we want to have as a time window, you could say. So here there could be 1000, and if I now hit Control Enter, and I replace the event here maybe with clicked so that we can actually see this, so I don't use the event data now, and I now hit Control Enter and then spam click me, you see clicked doesn't get printed as often as I click the button. It gets printed exactly once a second and all the other events get omitted. That's the awesome thing about observables. It's so easy to add this functionality with one of the many, many, many useful operators observables offer. And that really is the biggest advantage of observables. This funnel-like approach, which makes it very easy to write structured statements handling asynchronous code and the operators we can use in that funnel to transform the data. For example, if I wanted to print the X coordinate of the click event, I could output event client x, for example. That's just how we can access it. That's the default property provided to us on that default event object uh, click event emits. If I now hit click me, we see 32, 53, and so on. Now that's of course nice, but let's say we have more complex code here, and suddenly we decide that we want to use this client y variable instead of x. Now, if we only have one statement it is here, changing it isn't difficult. But let's say we were using that coordinate all over the place in many lines of code. Then we would have to change that everywhere. Well, we can simply add another operator to the party, map. Since I added after throttle time, and since the order here is important, this will also only receive a new event once a second. And here, map now works in a way that it takes a function as an input, this function in the end returns a new observable. It gets the event data or the observable data, I should say, as an input. So we could just say data. And here, what it does is it has to return something which will then automatically be wrapped in a new observable since we can only subscribe on an observable. So map has to return one so that subscribe works, which is called on the result of map in the end here since we chain it. So here, I can return data and then client y, for example. And here in subscribe, I know I get a coordinate, which one isn't important to me here. The previous operators will sort it out. And I can just output coordinate. Now if I hit control enter and clear this, this is actually the y coordinate, which you can see since it gets smaller if I click more on the, well, top side of that button. And we still have the throttling in place and we get the map data. That's the power of operators. That's the power of writing this in a structured way and looking at it like a funnel. And that is how you can think about RxJS and observables. We have this funnel-like approach for handling asynchronous code, which is really powerful and which might give you more features and more power than the normal vanilla JavaScript or promise using ways of handling that asynchronous thing gives you.